Welcome back to Seekistan. Today, as you know, because you clicked on this video, we're talking about neck training. Neck training is, is definitely something that's become a bit of a meme recently. When we hear about neck training, it's usually younger males asking us about how to train their neck, how to make their neck more thick. And it's very much the aesthetics of, of kind of thick muscle tissue around the neck here is what they're looking for neck training in terms of when you look at literature when you look at older strength and conditioning texts neck training is usually in the impact sports and today when we talk about neck training we're going to talk about it in three different categories so the first category will be the bangs the impacts uh, so we're training the neck to make us more resilient to con concussive events uh, or to direct neck injury right so uh, a lot of time if, if we get tackled so if I'm an American football player I get tackled from the side I'll have a reactionary whiplash injury and um, neck training making sure that muscle tissue around the neck is very very strong very fast to react impact um, and making sure there's quite a lot of mass of in that tissue around the neck that can make us a lot better at absorbing those blows obviously if you think about a boxer getting punched in the head uh, neck tissue is very very important then to to kind of becoming more resilient to that kind of whiplash effect we'll talk a small bit more about that impact and, and what's important in neck training to to circumvent or to become more resilient in a short while the second group then will be very much in the wrestling sports uh, so having a thicker neck having more muscle tissue around your neck will make you more difficult to choke uh, for most of us living in the modern world we don't really have to worry too much about someone coming up and choking us uh, on a daily basis thankfully but in certain sports Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is, is one example that comes to mind having a thicker neck and being more difficult for somebody to get an arm around for somebody to reach around to your lapel and choke you can make you better at that sport so uh, obviously chokes are one of the kind of prime ways somebody would would get a submission if your neck is thicker and it's more difficult for them to get a choke you're then going to be more effective at your sport uh, you can win more games at your sport through that kind of defense the last one then and this is probably the most common one is neck training for aesthetics lads in particular although some girls definitely fall into this category too want a thicker neck they want that gap between their ear and their shoulder to appear smaller and that's where most of our neck training questions come from so we're certainly going to cover that as well okay so let's start off what is the neck uh, what are we dealing with here is it the same way as training your quads your hamstrings your glutes whatever it is uh, the neck is it, pretty much a unique item in terms of how you train it so uh, the cervical vertebrae in your neck the neck system here is made up of seven vertebrae stacked on top of discs or with discs stacked in between them you then have a cornucopia of muscles that interact and interplay to keep both your head upright erect and to allow it to move around um, and to allow it to be quite resilient to getting hit from the side or to be able to hold yourself out at a kind of cantilevered system and hold quite significant weight uh, in any position so it's not just a thing of training one muscle or it's not even a thing of training two muscles like with your arms where you have agonists and antagonists we have a whole system of muscle tissues uh, and each of those muscles act in very very different ways they have very very different forms so when we take one of the main uh, muscle groups involved in, in neck and involved in how we might train our neck, it's the trapezius muscle. The trapezius muscle is quite a large or a relatively large muscle group. Uh, if I was to compare it to another muscle that you might be used to training, it would be similar, although smaller than the lats, right? So uh, it's a large muscle it acts in multiple ways it interacts with different joints and it interacts with different insertions and origin points to kind of allow you to move your skeleton around in different ways but definitely one of the ways it allows us to keep our head fully upright if we imagine the attachment points uh, for our traps are very very high on our skull they're much higher than a lot of people would think or than you might think if you were to put your finger into the base of your skull here and contract your traps you'd be able to feel that muscle tissue tightening up so that would be kind of on the far end of the spectrum it's a large muscle group it can take quite a lot of training and um, it reacts quite well to some training volume 
if you were to look at something on the other side, right? So just on the other side of the neck, you have the sternocleidomastoids, and these are these kind of bands of muscle tissue that come around our front. They connect here onto your clavicles and they wrap up and around the back of our skull, right? These, these act obviously to pull the head forward. They also act for quite a lot of rotational movement as well. These are one of the ones that will actually thicken up with some training. Uh, so they'd be somewhere in the middle. They, they kind of react quite well to training volume. And then you have the rest of the cornucopia where you have uh, you have a platysma, which is a sheet of muscle basically that attaches onto your clavicles or, and actually attaches a bit lower down as well and goes the whole way up in underneath your chin. Uh, that's a muscle that's incredibly involved in the head and how we can move our head around. Uh, we have muscles like the the levator scapula which attach on underneath your scapula and come up underneath your traps all of these things are attaching into your head so it's not a simple thing of i'm just going to do shrugs and if i do enough shrugs my traps will grow and my neck will look bigger to actually add muscle tissue to the neck it's a it's a bit more involved than that it's not a huge amount more complicated but you you just have to think about it slightly differently than you would if you were just doing some bodybuilding to a bicep or something along those lines okay let's look at the first group first and how we might train that first group so the first group are the impact sports right what's important for those impact sports do we necessarily need a lot of muscle mass around the neck well a lot of studies will show muscle mass is beneficial around the neck uh, but more important than just kind of mass around the neck is lean tissue mass. So when you see people with equal amounts of, of tissue around the neck, so you might have, uh, take for example, uh, 10 prop forwards who are playing rugby, the, those who will be more resilient to concussion or to concussive episodes will be those who have larger amounts of lean tissue mass. So it's not necessarily a thing that we want uh, kind of big swollen uh, necks where there's quite a lot of adipose tissue built in. You will actually see it, it, this group in particular prop forwards when they do the MRI scans of their neck, those with larger amounts of adipose tissue within the muscle, which is obviously very, very common, but uh, those amount with larger amounts of adipose tissue within the muscle will be uh, subjected to more concussive episodes than those without. So it's obviously important for that muscle to be lean. The interesting note there is that we can obviously make that muscle more lean by training it. So obviously body composition, all those things, that's a, a nutrition uh, discussion, but we can do some positive work in terms of becoming more resistant to concussions by just training our neck slightly. And we will talk about that in a small while. If we're looking at the other groups though, then is it the same thing? Do we train the neck in the same way we should for a rugby player or a boxer as if you just wanted to get big jacked or look like you have a big neck, or if you just want your neck to be thicker or your shoulders and, and ears to be a small bit closer together if you were involved in a grappling sport. Well, the first thing I would say is yes, the first thing you should always think about is having a, a certain prerequisite level of, of kind of skill in a movement before you really start pushing it down a particular area or really specializing in training that. Uh, for the kind of grapplers and for the people who just want to get their neck a small bit bigger i would firstly look at the kind of rest of your system as a whole right it's important to note that you're not going to be or it's very very unlikely you're going to be um slight framed very lean smaller individual and have a huge giant jacked neck uh you'll People will commonly talk about certain uh, movie people. They'll talk about Tom Hardy and Bane where his traps are gigantic. He looks jacked as hell. He's also really lean and in great shape. But you have to take it with a pinch of salt that Tom Hardy in that setting and in that uh, particular filming of that is probably at one of his biggest and most jacked points ever. So it, it's not like you're going to be able to be in a large calorie deficit doing a cut and then expecting to build muscle tissue around your neck at the same time, it's very, very rare you see smaller, skinnier individuals with the larger neck. Um, and that brings me on to a, a point I was going to talk about at the end. Androgen receptor density in the upper back and shoulders is 
kind of higher than a, in a lot of other places in your body which does mean that the neck and upper back and shoulders reacts quite well to, to certain androgens when people take them so it is something you really do have to take with a pinch of salt that people with the big jacked neck when you see the olympic wrestlers when you see certain mma fighters it's very very likely that a lot of that isn't coming through the particular training they're doing but it's through the use of certain androgens which will react very very well with the the upper back to to kind of really swell out that area so you do need to keep that in mind right so what does training the neck look like everyone's seen the harnesses people wear around their neck people have seen the the kind of gum shield uh thing you put in your mouth where you can put plates in it and lift your head up and down like this those are very much not in our wheelhouse at all with what you want to look for for the neck so when we talk about training at the neck we can talk about training the midline in a very very similar way and something you commonly hear us talking about is the use of isometric training for the midline right so obviously the midline is dealing with the spine and strengthening the the support systems around the spine we're doing the exact same thing in the neck and that is why when we look at neck training we will always or almost always start with isometric training and pretty much stick with isometric training or some very very slow movement for the rest of of the period we'll be training it what do the isometrics look like well commonly i'd want to break it up into kind of three main quadrants so you'll have pushing back towards the back pushing forwards towards the front and then pushing side to side and we just want to be resisting those movements it's very important to note at this time that you are training an area which is incredibly sensitive to training the maximum recoverable volume of the neck tends to be quite low unless you have either some genetic predisposition to having quite a large upper back and neck or unless you've done some sort of this training like this before so in terms of frequency obviously we wouldn't want the frequency to be to be crazily high probably two to three times a week in terms of frequency is, is about where neck training tends to sit obviously there's uh, groups when in an off season they might really have to push neck training and it might deviate beyond that but most of the time in both the impact group the kind of larger neck group for resisting choking and for the aesthetics group probably two to three times a week is about where your frequency should sit then moving on from frequency what we need to look at is intensity i spoke earlier about the muscles being very very sensitive to loading we spoke as well about different muscles being more or less sensitive than others you will definitely have to keep the intensity very very low for a long time in neck training and that is where most people fall off the bandwagon you're probably talking about a ramping in period of of three to four weeks of just getting people used to the isometric holds and then slowly titrating in either more time in the isometric hold or more intensity in that hold but you're you're just talking about lying down flat on the floor probably putting a small pillow like a quite light pillow underneath your head and then just gently pressing into the pillow while keeping the rest of your body just flat on the floor nice and engaged core and you just press backwards into that pillow probably starting with a 15 to 30 second hold on those volume of isometrics is something that people want you to talk about uh your volume is probably going to be three to five sets of probably that 15 to 30 seconds um, in those isometric holds now if i was to talk about an area that's less sensitive than others it will be that pushing back with you're mainly using your traps and it's a very strong movement we're well used to raising our head up like this against gravity your head weighs four or five kilos depending on how thick headed you are most of us don't have great posture so our head will sit forward and then our traps become very used to pulling our head back like this so that movement of lying flat down in a uh, supine position on the floor and just pressing your head into a pillow you don't have to lift the rest of your body off you're just pressing your head back that movement is about the strongest movement we have right 
the next movement would be doing something similar except on the front so in a prone position pushing our forehead into the ground lightly uh, that movement tends to be weaker if i was to give an arbitrary figure i'd say that movement will be around 50 percent as strong as it will be pulling our head back so you need to be conscious of that with your loading when you're talking about the isometrics you're probably talking about 10 to 20 seconds of an isometric hold and you might only need to do three sets of that uh, to elicit some sort of training effect simple like a slight amount of doms in the day after you do it is probably enough to know you're eliciting some sort of hypertrophy effect on those the last movement pattern and this is a bit more challenging because there's more moving parts will be in that side to side motion so if i was to lie on my shoulder and i just stacked up a load of pillows here and started pressing down what we'll usually see is the head as a whole will slightly go offline we'll start to bias either pulling the head forward and down or pulling the head back and down definitely using something like uh, one of the foam yoga blocks or using just some sort of more rigid object on those and then placing a pillow on top of it to take out this room between your the head and the ground uh, will allow you to have a bit more control than that also doing something like having the selfie camera of your phone or doing it in front of a mirror to ensure your head stays online i wouldn't uh, discourage people from that at all it's it's not a specific movement that we're trying to train and so the use of some sort of visual aid isn't something i discourage how do you know you're kind of getting into those ranges so we talked about doms you do need to be very very conscious when you're doing that that overtraining the neck will have very serious and, and almost instant ramifications on your day-to-day -day life right so whether you're a student uh, whether you're just working a desk job or whether you're working a quite physical job any straining or sprains of the neck or anything around there will have very serious ramifications that's why i'm not giving you super specific programs to do right now but these are kind of general ballpark figures i would highly recommend sticking to the ramping up period of probably three to four weeks so that would be just trying the movements for a week or so trying a few of those isometric holds for maybe five to ten seconds uh, seeing can you go then from 10 to 15 seconds the next week just build your way into these very very slowly as the kind of concluding point in the video i would be highly speculative of any neck training apparatus i would be highly speculative of any extreme neck training uh, procedures this is more important than you just straining your bicep a strain in your neck could take a lot longer to go away it will really impact your everyday life it will impact other things such as your posture and possibly uh, impact you downstream in terms of your back in terms of being able to do other training and um, so there definitely are pitfalls there just be conscious of it if you would be interested in the neck training program it's something a few people have asked about if we do get a new, enough interest in it we'll certainly release one and um, a lot of our one-to-one -one athletes who are field athletes do neck training at the moment uh, so it would be something that would be very easy for us to put up online just let us know down in the comments below or if you could like somebody's comment who put it up uh, that would be great if you have any other questions along the lines of just general strength and conditioning or along the specific line of neck training or becoming more resilient to injury uh, please do pop it down below and we'll try and get to it in good time